Hello, my name is Irene Janja, and I'm very pleased to be with you today for our Teachers E Symposium, providing an early childhood education session entitled Developing Early Learners. I invite you to also have a pen and paper available to jot down any questions you may have as we come through or go through the session, as there will be a question and answer uh, at the end of the session. Just a little bit about myself. Uh, I am actually a early years or early learners teacher from America. I spent many years with early, young students in the classroom there, as well as in Turkey. And with Oxford University Press, I'm currently the business development manager. However, I do many projects and many teacher trainings, not only for early learners, but throughout other age groups as well. So it gives me great pleasure to be with you today. Our session will be about 30 minutes long, and there will be a question and answer session at the end, and I'm hopeful to join you live for that opportunity. So thank you for attending, and let's jump right into our Developing Early Learners session. The focus of our symposium is around global skills. This connect, collaborate, create. I'd like to share with you now our global skills position paper, which you're able to find online very easily, the PDF. I invite you to download it. It's the most current research on global skills, giving you an outline of what they are and also some teaching strategies at various age groups. In terms of global skills, again, we're looking at critical thinking, collaboration, creativity, communication, information, communications, and technology, that digital component, which is very, very important. As you see now, we're coming through the, to, you, to you and providing our symposium digitally in this time and, and day and age. So technology has never been more important. So global skills does cover that area. Throughout the session, I'll also be referring to lower order thinking skills and higher order thinking skills. So this comes to from us, to us rather, from Bloom's Taxonomy. Those of you who remember your teaching, your teacher education years. So we're looking at those lower order thinking skills towards the beginning of our time, our early learners. And moving through as quickly as possible into higher order thinking skills, into that creating and applying and evaluating. Uh, we're looking at the global skills, the 21st century skills, the higher order, lower order thinking skills today in this session around a resource which we entitled Show and Tell. Show and Tell was created, uh, developed with, from the editors and publishers of Oxford University Press based on global skills research and impact studies. So it completely entails the 21st century skills, the higher order, lower order as well as the early years foundation stage, which I'll share with you in a moment. Show and Tell offers a great variety of support for the teacher and learner and also parent, which we know is really important to have parental engagement uh, and support in the classroom, as well as at home. I know many parents have expressed, what can we do at home to support our, our, our young learner? So here at our website, Oxford Teachers Club, you'll see support uh, for that teaching and uh, learning and for that parental engagement. Here you will see 21st century skills with competence, this is used for the teacher. If you're not quite familiar of what exactly 21st century skills are, and you'd like a little bit more insight into what they are as, as well as what kind of strategies would be helpful for you in the classroom, this is where you would go. I'd also like to share with you Oxford Owl for Home. And this site uh, avails itself to reading, English, math, some activities for at school, as well as child kids activities area through a variety of age groups. Here we're going to just use it today as a focus point, uh, a place to find information about those early years or early learners. In terms of early learners, we I will find you will find I refer to them as young learners. Uh, you forgive me for that. For early learners, we're looking at the early years foundation stage. And this is critical to understand with students of the ages to three to five, as many, uh, many countries use the early years foundation stage as a benchmark for their preschool objectives. 
This is broken into the early stage or foundation stage rather. It's split into three prime aspects such as social, personal, and emotional development, communication, physical development, into four specific areas of literacy, mathematics, understanding the world, and expressive arts. And I've shared that with you today, not only for you to understand how the importance and make sure that you understand the importance of how critical it is to understand these prime and specific areas as we work with and collaborate and plan for our, our early learners. And also they are completely touched upon within the show and tell resource. And I'll share that with you, how they are incorporated as we move through the session today. So in terms of areas of development, it's critical as a teacher to understand those benchmarks, <coughs> pardon me, of physical development. Where are our students coming to us as young learners at a very young age? They should have had the development of gross motor skills, those large motor skills, and we are honing in on the fine motor skills. So are they able to run? Are they able to sit? Do they have balance? These are important things to understand as a teacher, these benchmarks, uh, so that you can see if there's a deficit or if there's, a, there's a, a completion of that. This is a scope. So at an early, early age, our early learners should have these skills and they do develop as they go into primary. Areas of development and cognitive ability. Are they able to understand that rules, games, symbiotic play, starting with reasoning. These are, again, benchmarks of development for young learners or early learners that developed, develop on their learning journey. This social affective or social emotional development, that sharing, caring, playing uh, through play, fair friendship, that social aspect is extremely, extremely important for early learners. And we'll see that, how that is incorporated within show and tell to highlight the importance of that with our young students. And let's not forget the most important thing we're here today for is this linguistic ability. Not only in our first or native language, but in a second or third language. Many of our young students are exposed to a variety of language. So in terms of linguistic, this does include mathematics as well. Uh, so are they able to speak? Can they use simple sentences? Are they using de demonstrative word, demonstrative words? So these are important things to understand or important areas of development to understand at the beginning of the year to identify each and every student to see where they are along the spectrum if we need to include more or less in our classrooms. This is the beginning of our units of show and tell. We start with that very big question in this KWL charting. This, what do I know? What do I want to know? And what would I like to learn? Or what have I learned? But I invite you to take a step back. Prior to, I know you're eager as a teacher when you have a new resource to share with the students to just begin and dive in. And that's fantastic to do. That enthusiasm is fantastic. However, I invite you to first step back and see what do I need to prepare for my students or how can I prepare my students for success? What do I have at my fingertips to help me? Within every resource from Oxford University Press and Show and Tell is not an exception, we have a teacher's guide. The teacher's guide, you can see here, it's a one-page example, outlines very clearly the prime areas of learning, the objectives in that particular lesson, what specific areas are covered, such as communication, language, literacy. And I would like to point out to you as well that critical thinking, that 21st century skill is incorporated absolutely throughout the resource. We give you a structure, and open and close in questions uh, to move you along if you're not as confident in teaching 21st century skills or the early years foundation stage framework. So before, prior to jumping in to any resource, please have a look at the teacher guide and specifically with show and tell, we arrive or provide for you a lot of support. Another interesting area that's very fundamental for the teacher to utilize is what we call a teacher's resource centers. So many of our resources have this particular resource center. However, this is the show and tell resource center. We have the teacher's guides, the word cards, number cards, 
resource banks for phonics, progress checks, assessment, and additional professional development. So again, understanding what you have at your fingertips as a teacher in terms of young learners, very crucial, very crucial. I've spotlighted here for you the Routines Song Bank. So yes, we are covering and speaking of 21st century skills, global skills, higher order, lower order thinking skills, as well as the early years foundation stage. And one of the most crucial, crucial areas with young learners is routine. Routine is essential. And here you will find a whole routine song bank which you can choose from. Hello songs, goodbye songs, transition songs, weather songs, number songs, ready to sing, ready to play, cleaning our hands, washing our hands, lining up. There are a variety of different tools or songs for you to utilize to incorporate into your lessons right from the beginning of your, of your, your time with show and tell or any of our resources. So routine essential. One of the another critical areas of routine is puppet work. Remember, we're looking at young learners, so um, imagery and incorporation of imagination and creation, creativity is critical. So within our resources, we do provide puppets in many cases. When you look at routines and establishing a routine, really critical for the teacher to model the expectation with the puppet in front of the classroom, and then quickly move to including the child or the student into that interaction, and then releasing to the child and the puppet. And how could that be? How could we include the child and the puppet? Through our Oxford Teachers Club, we see finger puppet that are available to download. So now you have allowed for the students to create their own finger puppets, and you have a variety of activities to use in the classroom, and then allow for those puppets to go home and be used at home with their parent. Again, that parental link, highly important. So the students are engaged with a movement and communication, prompting that collaboration with their parent and also with their peers in the classroom. Another wonderful opportunity for to building a routine is hello and feelings. So how are you today is very critical. We do uh, pretty much in every preschool or young learner classroom, a routine of good morning or hello or welcoming to the lesson, using a routine song, but diving, diving a little deeper into that and how are you feeling today? I am happy. Don't stop there. Why are you happy? Why are you sad? So allowing for a little more communication with the teacher, modeling the expectation was a phenomenal way to build another routine in the morning as you begin the lesson. The use of flashcards is extremely important with young learners. So you're creating a context. I invite you to use the flashcards prior to the beginning of, of the unit, right at that big question. And this allows for that image to word correspondence and for manipulation of the flashcard. So engagement is highly important. You're building context here to set them up for success within the unit. You're beginning to use the vocabulary right at the beginning of the unit to bring that to life for the student. Remembering our early learners do not come to us in the classroom with a great amount of information or a great amount of worldly knowledge to share. So we have to create context in many cases, create experiences for them. We can create context through matching games, through hide and seek, through picture games. Here is an example for you. Cover your eyes. I took one away. Raise your hand if you know what it is. Open your eyes. What's missing? The sun. We can also introduce the next topic. We've introduced weather words, and now we're moving on to another, another word or the theme of the top particular unit. So using flashcards to introduce the theme built on the last theme or prior knowledge is really important. So again, continually building, revise, review, building, building context through repetition. One of the key things for early learners is repetition. Over and over and over, utilizing the vocabulary in a variety of contexts. And this is where song, video, flashcards are all critical. Now we can jump into the unit. 
in, in the particular beginning of the unit, we can jump into our KWL chart of what we'd like to know. So what do we know currently? And you're stimulating any prior knowledge and introducing that new vocabulary, which you've already built some context to. Here we are looking at the earliest foundation stage of communication and language and literacy. We then move into the say it word, or play with me, pardon me. So now we're including some physical development into our literacy. We're making learning active as quickly as possible, gaining that muscle memory. Many of you may have heard of TPR, that total physical response. So TPR is critical when we look at building our students' ability, agility, with gross motor to fine motor skill. Fine motor skill is extremely valuable for us to focus on as we, they need to be prepared to move into primary and writing. So we want to make sure we incorporate as much TPR, or physical development, or muscle memory as possible. And here, throughout our resource, we provide that opportunity. I shared with you a little recording mechanism within our resource. Students can not only hear the instruction or the song, but there's also an opportunity for them to record themselves and play it back. So motivation, highly engaging and motivational for the students when they hear their own voice or their own creations. As you move through the unit, you see a lot of opportunity now for personal, social, emotional development and continuing of literacy. Read with me. So again, we're building that context through shared story, continuing building with the words of the focus of the unit, through illustration, through prediction, through open and closed questions, and you're returning again, repetition, 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 many times to the story. We then would encourage the students to use story characters or story cards to play with that story, to start building their own story and engage that touch of the flashcard to move around in sequence in, in the story is highly, highly, highly valued. We come back to the story and exaggerate it, retell it, encouraging the students to join in, adding new words, adding an ending, a new ending as additional part to the story, and in many cases, adding themselves as a character in the story. Highly motivational for the students and allows for them for a chance to communicate and engage. We move then on to the next part, which is a sing with me. So now, remember we spoke of lower order to higher order thinking skills. We are allowing that memorization, that remembering through rhythm, memory, actions, activity. Moving into understanding and applying now as we move from the beginning of the unit into towards the middle now. So now we've gone through memory and action and rhythm to understanding and starting to apply. I'd like to share with you there's an opportunity for staging when you come to songs. So in the initial, uh, initial chance, our first exposure in the classroom, songs with actions, really important. Students copy those actions, that muscle memory, TPR. They sing it again, encouraging, joining in with those actions and repeating a number of times, repetition, repetition, repetition. Less able students are able then to join in towards the end and more able students will pick up those chunks and support the lower ability students. Don't stop there, come back again. Introduce a first verse and ask the students then to come in with the additional, or maybe a new action, a new muscle memory, a new TPR movement to add to the song. Adding verse by verse, a new action, a new action. Right? This allows for deep collaboration, of course communication and creativity, and they're using critical thinking to come up with these new ideas and new actions and new words. It's highly motivational and engaging for the students. So staging of songs, extremely important. We move on to say it with me. We've allowed over the unit and to this point, a lot of exposure for context. Now we need to build in and build upon more vocabulary. So here's our opportunity to now look at word cards and the creation of a word wall. Word walls can be done with our word cards, placing at the, a, the line, the visual line of the student as they enter the room and exit the room. So close to the door is preferable. 
And this allows for the opportunity for students to engage with the words to start create sentences or walk by and their eye catches a word and they say it out loud, spontaneous, spontaneous learning. You can also use a word wall in terms of word bingo, miming it, Simon says. And I invite you to have a look at, say with me in terms of word families. So here in this unit, you see ip word family, the im word family, the in word family, and the up word family. And your word walls can be organized that way as well. We move to values, extremely important with early learners, personal, social, emotional, and we're adding in mathematics. So learning is more than language. We want the students now to understand morals and values can be incorporated. Again, that personal, social, emotional uh, aspect or prime area of early years foundation, critical at this age group as it will build with them and be a foundation for their next journey or their next exposure in primary. We built to explore with me, adding into, adding into mathematics and physical development. We're fostering creativity now because we've set the benchmarks, we've set the foundation, we now can be creative, much more so. So in terms of mathematics, we're looking at shapes and incorporating now brainstorming activities. So how can we represent shapes? Can we say them loudly or quietly or quickly? Or slowly triangle triangle can we see them can we draw them do we see them in pictures do we see them in the room do we see them outside exploring our world around us now can we make them through a variety of different ways can we make a flashcard can we use paint can we use crayons it's at this point as well that we use in the unit our progress a little assessment opportunity progressing check and transition worksheets for those students who need a little extra revision. So we have built-in assessment opportunities. Really important to take a step back and reflect upon where are we at at this point before we finish up and start gearing up for the end. The end of the unit, we'll do a project. Thinking skills. My goodness, we've now continued our journey with lower level thinking skills to higher level thinking skills. We've covered memory. We've covered analyzing now we're moving into applying pardon me now we're coming into those upper level higher order thinking skills of analyzing and evaluating through categorization study skills and noticing so the thinking skills uh, also incorporate expressive art and design and mathematics if you're not that uh, keen or confident with mathematics. Not every teacher is. I was a little hesitant myself with mathematics. We do offer a wonderful guide. It's called Number and Calculation, Getting the Best Results, which you can find uh, on, on our websites as well. And this is a wonderful guide to outline what is number and calculation at a variety of different age groups, and especially in terms of early learners or young learners. We move on to prepare for the big project at the end. And we'll see communication and language critical here because we've set the foundation. We want to make sure we allow a lot of opportunity for the students to use all the knowledge that they have gained through the unit. Mathematics also incorporated. So continuing to foster creativity, preparing for our project work, but setting the students up for success. Again, critical before you release a project to any student to set them up for success to do it as a group first. So group application, all together we put together a project, then we release it to a smaller group to put together a project before we can release it to an individual student to create a project. Again, modeling the expectation, setting up for success. And here we see with Show Me that opportunity to create together before they go into the big project at the end, the show and tell project. Here it's physical development, personal, social, emotional, mathematics, co communication, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, all combined because students will now be prepared and able and highly motivated to create their own project, their own work and display it to their peers and also their parents. Speaking of parents, parent connection, Extremely important. We know that parents are vital and critical. Their support and their cooperation throughout the school year is really critical with early learners. Here we see a nice support for parent guides. 
Many of our resources also include Lingo Kids, which is an app for games and songs. The Lingo Kids uh, is gracious, and we have a partnership with, that much of our content is also available on app with Lingo Kids. So that nice connection in the classroom to the home through games and songs. We also have Oxford Parents, a website available in many, many languages which offers the support and guidance to parents about what activities, what things to do with young students, any student, variety of age ranges, but in particular young early learners, what can we do at home to support them? And what, why are we doing certain things in the classroom at certain ages? Or what are some developmental stages? So a little education of the, stu of the parent is nice and providing some support for them, always, always beneficial. I'd like to share with you one last piece of a wonderful website with you. It's on YouTube. It's called Oxford Owl Storytelling. Storytelling is a crucial, crucial part of students to hear the language in use, to expand upon the context that they've been exposed to. For instance, if you were doing the unit on the body, then you would go to the Oxford Owl Storytelling site and see a book that is read entitled Everybody Has a Body by the author, and he brings it alive with the characters. And this is a wonderful consolidation of language learning, a chance for the students to see the language in action and build on the context once again in a fun, inviting, and uh, imaginative way. Remember, repetition, 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 really important with our early learners. Highlighted today in our session were the global skills. 21st century skills, lower level to higher level thinking skills, the early years foundation stage framework, including of TPR, that phys total physical response. I hope that you found this session extremely beneficial and you've made some questions, made some notes to share. I hope that you found that again, very fruitful today, adding some insight that may even not, had, not have known. And I look forward to seeing you in the question and answer and enjoy the rest of your e-symposium. Thank you very much.